right there. Hey, data lovers, and welcome to another episode of I Love Data Fridays here at the International Data Evaluation Center on the campuses of the Ohio State University. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode, episode 48 of I Love Data Fridays. I feel like we haven't seen each other all summer, so good to see you. So as the title implies today here on I Love Data Fridays, we are going to be talking about the changes to the 2020-21 data collection and website for this year. But hey, before we get into that, who's talking data to you? Well, of course, you've got me, Jeff Reimer Bashore, Director and Co-Principal Investigator here at the International Data Evaluation Center. So you know what? We're not going to delay it anymore. Let's get to it and let's talk a little data. All right, so here we go. Some changes to our uh, data collection and website for the 2021 school year. And before we get into it, just to uh, let you know that um, these recommendations that you're going to see today have really been a collaborative effort. So um, IDEC has been talking to teacher leaders from around the United States throughout the summer. Uh, we've also been talking to trainers from our various um, universities about some recommended changes. And then also IDEC has received some recommendations from the North American Trainers Group uh, task force. So all of these recommendations went into our consideration for uh, what what you're going to see in these upcoming slides. And uh, don't worry, and we all know this year is going to be uh, a strange, chaotic year. And so as the year goes along, we will adapt along with these changes or whatever difficulties we encounter this year at the school year. So don't worry about that. Now, uh, before, as we go across or talk about these changes, I want you to know some of the guiding philosophies that went into the decisions of whether to make changes or not. Um, one is that, in general, I, one of IDEC's sort of primary mission is that, you know, we're here to monitor the overall health of the intervention. You know, is reading recovery going as, it's, as it should be? So as we went through questions and received um, recommendations, we asked, um, you know, are these questions here to help monitor the overall health overall health of the intervention. Um, the second guiding philosophy is that we took into account sort of the, the time and effort it would need to answer the question or to do testing if we were to like say do some additional testing. So uh, these two, I, uh, two things guided our decision making process when we got recommendations from all those um, people that we talked to throughout the summer. Uh, teacher leaders, just a reminder, uh, this slide is sort of left over from the town hall meeting. Uh, you can share a copy of these slides are over at the IDEC website. So let me just show you real quick. So if you just have your teachers go over to the IDEC website, our public website, www.idecweb.us, and you have them click on publications. So take you to our publications page. And they will find, you and your teachers can find the slides for, uh, for this video right here on the website. And you can download them for your use and to distribute. And as always, you can share this video with your teachers. I love Data Friday's video with their teachers so they can hear about the changes for themselves um, as well. Okay, just a few reminders before we get into the changes. Uh, just to remember that you can continue to enter 2019-20 data until September 25th. So if you're planning on entering some sort of year-end data for students, you can do that until September 25th. Data entry for the 2021 school year will not start until October the 1st. All right, here we go. So our first change for this year is that we will not be collecting any tested, not instructed uh, data this year. So this was a, overall, this was a collaborative recommendation from the various groups that IDEC talked to this summer to try to reduce some of the data entry burden. So no TNI data will be collected by schools this year. Um, you will see this reflected on the View Schools list page on the website when you uh, if you were to check that this summer. So when you submit your data finally, um, you will see that there will only be a column for random sample data collection. 
which brings me right next to, to our next uh, topic is that so this year all schools will try to collect random sample data. So this was another one of these little collaborative recommendations from our uh, various uh, groups of uh, uh, within the reading recovery community that we talked to. Um, so I'm just emphasizing the word try. So what I'm going to say, we're going to try to collect uh, random sample data with the following understanding. Um, we've realized that there will be difficulties in selecting and assessing um, random sample students in, in remote and hybrid scenarios this year. Um, so we realize that it's not going to be easy. But please have your teachers try. But if it's going to be too difficult to select and test students, contact your trainer and just ask for an exemption. It's okay, So, but let's try. Okay, we're gonna be postponing the hearing and recording sounds and words pilot uh, for one year. Uh, this came from a recommendation from our hearing and recording sounds word, hearing and recording sounds and words task force. So you will use the current hearing recording sounds and words. You will use your usual selection procedures for students, you know, current stay nines and everything. So uh, no pilot for this year. We will not be collecting any Slauson data this year. So this was a collaborative recommendation from the reading recovery community. So no need to have test your students using any of the, of the Slauson oral reading test forms. We will also not be collecting any other year end data questions. So specifically questions that fall under this uh, on the screen where it says other year end data over here. This includes those questions about special ed, retention, supplemental literacy instruction, et cetera, et cetera. Those all fall under the other year-end data page. We will not be collecting that this year, and it will be, um, I know it's showing on the screen, but we will remove that from the website, that column from the website this year. On our teacher data page, we have questions about other students served and in teachers' other roles. Right now, that is a set of 14 questions that asks, asks you to report how many students uh, you served in your other role by grade. We are going to be reducing that to just simply one question, where it just simply asks, how many students do you serve in your other role, rather than asking you to break it out by grade level. Of course, the new uh, you've all probably heard about the new updated end of intervention status categories. These are going into effect this year. So with the green one, the accelerated progress, that is just the, it's not a new category. We're just replacing the terminology instead of saying discontinued. Uh, we're going to be using the terminology accelerated progress. In that sort of darkish blue one there, the progress, that is a brand new category for this year, so you and your teachers will see that on the website. Of course, you'll see the last remaining are sort of the ones we're familiar with, the recommended, the none of above, incomplete, and moved students. Those have not changed for this year. All right, so we now do have some new questions that we are going to be asking this year. Um, so one of the first new questions we're gonna be asking is how many first grade classroom teachers are in their first year of their professional career? Now, some of you who attended the town hall meeting are noticing that I have this in italics, and um, I'm just trying to highlight that um, since the town hall meeting, I've made one modification to the language here in the question based off some quest, uh, uh, clarifying uh, questions that I got back from teacher leaders, and it's specifically uh, the use of the phrases of our first year of their professional career. So um, this is to help distinguish between the teacher who, say, was teaching fourth, fourth grade and then came to first grade, uh, we're, this question is just focusing on those teachers who are in their first year of their professional career. Um, so if someone did come back, say, from fourth grade to teach first grade, they would not fall into this category of being counted for this question. We've also added some questions about the core literacy curricula being, in, being used in grades K through three, and I'll show you some examples of the questions here in a minute. And then we also added some questions about, uh, besides reading recovery and DLL, what other tier two and tier three interventions are being used in a school? So here's an example of what those questions look like. Up at the top here, you can see our uh, questions about the first grade classroom teachers and their professional career. Next question, you can indicate the different curriculum up to three. You don't have to put in three, but you can enter up to three. And then finally, we have our questions about uh, the other tier two and tier three interventions. Once again, you can enter up to three. You don't have to enter three. We just, you can have space to enter up to three different 
interventions going on in the school. And each of these uh, drop-down lists has an other option in it. So if you don't see what the curriculum that you're using or the intervention that you're using, uh, you can simply select other in there. All right, so now we have uh, another new question that's been added to the website, and this was a collaborative recommendation from our different groups. And the question is, how was the OS administered? So you'll see every, so on the fall entry, exit, mid-year, year-end pages, you will see this question being added to all of those pages, and teachers will have uh, three options. Um, it can indicate either that the uh, OS was administered in person, administered remotely, and then finally a third one administered in a hybrid manner. So now those at the town hall meeting will probably say, hey Jeff, that seems to be a new one since the town hall meeting. And it is because uh, we got some feedback from people that, uh, that you know, it may not be quite as cut as dry. So for example, sometimes teachers will administer the OS over a two day period. So it is possible that one day a child might get it administered in person um, and the next day it might be finished um, remotely. So we've added this third option to say that it was sort of administered in a hybrid manner. To, uh, sorry, hi in a hybrid manner. So like I said, this question gets asked each time the OS is administered. So we've modified another question on the exit page for students. We've modified the question number of lessons. So, you know, last year, you know, we asked the question, how many lessons did the student receive? This year, we've broken that question out into three questions. So we've asked how many lessons did, student, did the student receive following a standard delivery model? How many lessons did the student receive following a modified delivery model? And how many lessons did the student receive following a remote delivery model? So once again, it's a, an attempt here to try to uh, questions added to kind of help monitor the health of the reading recovery intervention and do the different delivery models affect the intervention in some way. So here are some broad definitions for you. Uh, so how many lessons did a student receive following the standard model? So our standard model would, would we would be with the standard reading recovery lesson that we all are used to giving in the past. So schools are functioning um, with daily in-person attendance and instruction, and there's instruction for all students going on. Uh, reading recovery instruction is delivered according to the standards and guidelines. Um, this includes the conditions where it's one-on-one -on -one to one instruction, face-to-face, 30-minute -face, daily lessons, you know, addressing these uh, specific instructional activities in each of the lessons with access up to 20 weeks of instruction. Um, the modified model, you know, how many lessons did a student uh, receive? following a modified delivery model. So this is where school um, is in attendance um, and all instruction may occur on like an alternative schedule um, and reading recovery is delivered with modifications resulting from instructional adjustments needed by the school's accommodations due to the pandemic. So for example, if you're doing an alternating day where school students are coming in on different days, instead of doing one lesson a day, you decide to do two lessons per day, that would be a modified model. If instructions go a little longer or go longer than the 30 minutes uh, for a lesson, that's a modified model. But we're still talking about one-on-one -on -one instruction uh, with the students. It's just there might be possible modifications. Uh, another example would be having to you know, you might be in the same room with the student, but you're protecting each other in some way, whether it's like separated by plexiglass or something, that would be a modified sort of lesson. And then finally, how many lessons did the student receive following a remote delivery model? This is just where your, uh, you know, schools are functioning remotely. There is no access to school, in-school instruction. So reading recovery teachers are having to deliver their instruction using remote methods or delivery. And we're um, not specifying what they are. You can be using Zoom or Google, you know, all sorts of different remote delivery techniques. But once again, the, this, um, the conditions include one-on-one -on -one instruction. Okay, so those are the changes for this year. And so I just want to quickly talk about uh, reporting data for the 2019-20 school year. And I want you to know that IDEX got you covered. For your annual reports, we've made some changes to the annual reports for this year, some to address the you know, the, the COVID changes for this year and others are just brand new tables to the report that we had been planning on putting in. Um, I highly recommend that you go 
and watch the following episodes of I Love Data Fridays. Episode 46, where we actually go over the annual report changes. Following that episode 46, there's a short episode that addresses the executive summaries. We got some great feedback from teacher leaders, and we made some very quick turnaround changes to the executive summaries so that they focus on first round students only. And then of course, um, episode 45 of I Love Data Fridays, we had a special episode of How Do You Do Data? And that was with Laurel Dickey. And she and I take the new tables that you will find in your reports, your 2019-20 uh, reports, and we sh go through and we look at how to troubleshoot your data using multiple reports together. If you don't know how to get to our YouTube channel, all you have to go to is videos.idecweb.us and that will take you right to our YouTube channel. Also, we've rerun all your we've rerun all your 2018-19 and 17-18 site and district and UTC reports to include these new tables that we talk about in episode 45 and episode 46. All right, so if you want to look over some historical data with these tables, they're there and they are waiting for you up on the website. Another way that we got you covered this year is we've got a new on-demand report, and it's called our school report. I'm going to zoom in here real quick. So in this school report, it's a, a one-page on-demand report. Actually, there's one page for each school in this on-demand report, and it's showing the growth of your discontinued and recommended students from fall to mid-year. Um, so at the top of the report, we just have a brief description of what the report is showing. At the center here, it's showing the number of children who completed the intervention, so that's the total number of children who were either discontinued or recommended in the fall, because this report focuses on first round students. Um, and then it breaks it down on whether they were discontinued. We've tried to use some um, uh, administrator uh, language familiar to administrators, so they reach, so discontinued children are reached the class average in reading and writing. And then, of course, we have a second one for our recommended children right there. So below this is a bar chart showing growth from the middle of this, from the fall, which is the bottom of each bar, to the middle of the school year, which is the top of each bar. And there's one bar for each student. Now, this report has the student names hidden, but your student names would be below each bar. Um, your reading recovery data are the gray bars. Reading recovery or DLL data are the gray bars. And then the white bar over here is actually the typical first grader in the United States, the random sample. So we're comparing your kids to the random sample. And we're using the OS total score to do this, to show that accelerated growth. So you'll notice that each bar has um, in it a months of growth. So the typical first grader makes about five months of growth. And our uh, reading recovery kids, we want them to make that accelerated growth. So you can see in this example, we've got kids making 10 months of growth, all the way up to 14 months of growth. So we can show that accelerated growth even in the first, first round. We added a new option to the OS uh, scores by schools on demand report. It is a first round option. So if you go, you'll see on the on-demand report, there's this new drop-down box that says first round students only. And if you select yes, and then click view report, it will, the report will refresh and show you data just using data from fall to mid-year, your first round students. And remember, there's one bar for each school on here. And it initially starts out by showing growth on the total score. Um, also new this year is a bar, once again, for the typical first grader in the United States. So you can show that accelerated growth for fall to mid-year. So we've got you covered. We've got a lot of changes to our reports to help show that data in the first, first round. In case you missed it or uh, we're on vacation, and I hope you guys got some vacations this year, um, IDEC did some digging into data sessions in July. We did four sessions uh, little Zoom sessions that we advertised, and we had anywhere from 5 to 16 people in these sessions. Nice little sort of um, small session discussion groups joining us in different sessions. We had some discussion facilitators along with myself, um, but Christy Flint from uh, Gwinnett County, teacher leader from Gwinnett County, Jamie Lipp and Jim Schnuck from Ohio State joined us on a couple days, and then we were also joined by Amy Smith, teacher leader from uh, Madison County, Kentucky. In these, we learned about the new tables. Uh, we learned how to use multiple reports together. 
And then really the important part is like we learned how to find actionable data, the data that can tell you how to make some, that shows you where you can make some changes to have an effect on your, um, your interventions in your school. And it was really the discussions that happened that helped us find that actionable data. So we're thinking about doing some more in the fall, so stay tuned. We'll try not to send you emails right into the busy season about this. I think we might have to wait maybe till, I don't know, October or something to this. But just keep an eye on your uh, communications from, from IDEC. All right, folks, in closing, I want to say, so just remember that, you know, this year IDEC really made a commitment to reducing your data entry burden during the pandemic. Um, as we went about thinking about what to remove or change, um, you know, we made sure that we were committed to gathering the necessary data to help you monitor the effectiveness of your implementations and that we were sensitive to, try to be very sensitive to the time and effort needed to complete data or if we were gonna do additional testing, how much you know, time to do those um, testing. So I will also say this, if anyone needs some help with their 2019-20 data, please contact me. Here is my email right on the screen. Or you can always contact the help desk. Julie will always make sure that I get emails from uh, teacher leaders. Uh, let us help talk to you about your data. All right, well, this includes our annual update to the, our website and data collection for the school year. I want to say thank you for watching, and if you haven't subscribed, match that subscribe button on our YouTube channel so you can get all of the updates from my deck. And I want to say once again, thank you for watching another episode of I Love Data Fridays. Teacher leaders, trainers, everyone in the reading recovery community, good luck. Be safe this year. Get out there and do some good work. And don't worry, we've got your back. And we'll make changes as necessary. And as I always say in closing, hey, we'll talk data to you later.